Hello everyone, welcome to MicroCare Academy. I am Sajjad Khan, bringing you over 14 years of hands-on experience in the IT industry. In this video, we are going to dive into the world of Azure Data Factory and revolutionize data integration and transformation process. We will go through the essentials of Azure Data Factory, what is the definition of Azure Data Factory, how does it work, exploring the scenarios where Azure Data Factory shines, architectural diagram. At the same time, we will learn about how to create a block storage, creating a SQL server and the SQL database, and also how we can able to create Azure Data Factory instance. And then we will learn about creating data sets and linker services, and we will create a pipeline with the copy data activity. All these things we will have a demo on Data Factory Studio. All right. For those of you who haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now and turn on the notification bell icon. By definition, Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based data integration service. Allows you to create, schedule, and manage data-driven workflows for moving, transforming, and analyzing data across various data sources and destinations. In simple, Azure Data Factory is a tool that helps you gather information from different places and store it in a useful way so that you can analyze or use it later. All right, now let's see how Azure Data Factory works. In this specific use case, we will demonstrate how Azure Data Factory enables us to efficiently move patient data from Azure Blob Storage where it is stored as an Excel file and seamlessly transfer it into SQL database table using copy activity feature. We will walk through step-by-step -step process, highlighting the configuration settings required for this data transfer. By the end, you will have a clear understanding of how Azure Data Factory effortlessly orchestrates the movement of data between different sources and destinations. To move data from an Excel sheet stored in Azure Blob Storage to an Azure SQL database table, using Azure Data Factory. We will follow these steps. Create Azure Blob Storage and upload an Excel sheet which contains patient's data. Create Azure SQL Database and create one table inside it. Create an Azure Data Factory instance. This serves as a data integration service for our data movement pipeline. Create linked services. Linked services establish connections to our data source and destinations. In this case, we will create two linked services, one for Azure Blob Storage and another for Azure SQL Database. Create datasets. Datasets represents the data structures and locations of our source and destination data. We will create two datasets, one dataset for the Excel sheet and another one for SQL Database table. Create a pipeline. Pipeline defines the workflow and activities that will be executed in Azure Data Factory. Inside the pipeline, we will add a new copy activity and then we will configure the source and destination. Here the source will be the dataset representing the Excel sheet and the destination is a dataset representing the SQL database table. After that, we will publish and trigger the pipeline. By this, a data movement process will be stored. All right, let's go to Azure portal and then we will open the Azure Data Factory Studio and where we will demonstrate these steps. Let's create Azure Blob Storage. For that, we need a storage account. So we will search for a storage account and then we will create one storage account now. And here we can select a resource group. If you don't have any resource group, then you can create a new one. Let's enter the storage account name. And this storage account name must be globally unique. It means that the storage account name you choose must be unique across all existing storage accounts in Azure. We can select a region and then the redundancy. And then we can click on review. By default, I'm keeping all the default settings of a storage account. So let's hit the review button and this will validate and then we can click on create this will create a storage account for us
let's go to the resource and here we will we will be going to create a container and inside the container we are going to upload an excel file let's give a name like input and let's click on create button and by this one container has been created where we are going to upload an excel file which contains a patient's data let's browse for a file and then select the file and then click upload button here now this file has been uploaded to our container let's create a sql server in azure portal search for sql servers if you don't have any SQL server, let's start creating a new SQL server. First of all, let's select a resource group. And then we have to specify a globally unique server name. After that, we can choose a location and then the authentication method. Here I am selecting the SQL server authentication method and I have to specify the admin user and the password and then we will click on networking button. Enable these settings. By this, it will allow the Azure services to connect to the SQL server without whitelisting their IP address. Let's click on review plus create. And then the create button, this will validate and it will create a SQL server. That's it. Now our SQL server is ready. Now we have to create a database. Let's create a SQL database. From SQL server, we can able to view all our SQL databases. If we don't have anyone, let's start creating a new SQL database. Here we have to specify a name of a SQL database. And then we can select our workload environment and also the computation and storage. For demo purpose, I am selecting a basic tire. After that, we can select the redundancy and then we can click on review plus create. This will validate and will create a new SQL database. Let's click on the create button. A new resource that is a SQL database will be created for us. All right, so our database is ready. So let's go there. And here we can able to see our server name that where our SQL database is resides. And from here we have an interesting feature which is a query editor. From this we can able to query uh, our database. So let's type the password and then click OK. This will open a query editor where we can able to write our SQL statements. All right, so we have to allow this IP address in order to connect the SQL database from the query editor. Click OK. So in this query editor, we can able to run our SQL statements. Here I'm going to create a table with the name patients, which is used to store the data coming from the patient's Excel sheet. We can also write the select statements in order to view the data. Let's create a Azure Data Factory instance. Search for Data Factories and we can able to see all our Azure Data Factory instances. If you don't have anyone, let's start creating a new one. Select the resource group and then specify a name for your Azure Data Factory instance. Select the region and then click Review plus Create button. Let's go to the resource and from here click on launch studio. This will launch the Azure Data Factory Studio. 
inside the Azure Data Factory, you will find various tabs, including Author, Monitor. Click on Author to expand it further. Under Author, you will see different sections such as Pipelines, Datasets, Linked Services, and more. Let's start creating the datasets now. Search for Azure Blob Storage. Select it and click on Continue. These are the formats currently supported. Let's select Excel and click on Continue. Give some name for our data set. And then we need to create a link service. Here again, specify some name for our link service. Authentication type. Currently, I'm using for demo purpose account key. For production scenarios, it is better to use the managed identity. And you can select some subscription and then select a storage account. And then you can click on create. This will create a link service for our storage account. After this, the file path. It is telling that where is our file located. The easiest way is to browse the files and then select a container and select the patient Excel file. And then we need to specify a sheet name that which contains the patient's data. As we know that our Excel file contains header, so select first row as a header and click OK. By this, our source dataset has been created. You can click on test connection in order to check the connection was succeeded or not. And also you can click on preview data to view the data inside the Excel sheet. All right, so our source dataset is ready. Now we have to create a sync dataset. Let's start creating our sync dataset. Search for SQL and select Azure SQL database and click continue. Let's give some name for our dataset. After this, we have to create a link service. And this link service is for our Azure SQL database. So we have to specify a SQL server and then a database. And then we have to authenticate by using any one authentication type Currently here, I'm using SQL authentication. Enter the username and password and then click create. This will create a link service for our Azure SQL database. Select a table. And then click on OK. By this, our sync dataset is ready. And here we can check for a connection and also we can able to preview data so that we can able to view a data inside the database table. All right, so by this, our source and sync datasets are ready. So now we have to start creating a pipeline and copy data activity. Let's start creating our new pipeline. Name it somehow. Inside the activities, we have various activities. Expand the move and transform, drag the copy data activity. And give some name for our copy data activity. And inside the source tab, we have to select our source data set. And inside the sync tab, we have to select our sync data set and the right behavior will be insert that we are going to insert a data into Azure SQL database table. Mapping specifies how a data should be mapped between the source data set and the destination data sets during the data copying process. So I'm keeping this as default. Let's validate this activity. Our pipeline has been validated successfully. And then click on debug. This will trigger the pipeline and it will start the data movement process. That is the data will be start moving from the Excel sheet to our Azure SQL database table. We can also monitor the status of our activity. Currently it's in queued state. Once it becomes succeeded, 
status will be changed to succeeded. All right, by this, our data movement was completed. Let's validate this on destination database table. Write a query, select store from the table name, and we will see other result here that a data has successfully moved from our Excel sheet to our Azure SQL database table. Let's go back to our pipeline and then we can publish all our resources. That is, we can publish the pipelines and data sets which we have been created till now. By this, we successfully demonstrate the data movement process from an Excel file to Azure SQL database. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thank you.